Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being here. Um, let me first start off by saying how wonderful of an opportunity this is for our programs and for the conference and for the sport of volleyball. It really is a remarkable event. Last night's reception was um, just a wonderful opportunity and experience to mingle with all the other teams and coaches and players that we see and we play and I see out recruiting, but to see them in this environment was very special. So um, I'm very, again, happy to be here. It's important, I think, for me to recognize the student athletes that I brought with me. Madison Chitty has been our libero for the last two seasons. Uh, she was one of the youngest liberos in the league, if not the youngest, when she started as a freshman. And um, she grew up in Big Ten country, but chose Rutgers because she's very committed to doing something special as we you know, kind of continuously build this program into much uh, greater heights. And she can talk more about that a little bit later. But And then I also brought Rachel Tam with us. She's our lone New Jerseyan on the team. And that was very important to me when I got to Rutgers to make sure that our state was represented and that the tri-state area recognizes that volleyball is a is a growing sport in our and not in our area but across the country it is it is much um, much more uh, highly played <laughs> to make sense if that makes any sense so for her to come and show that you know she can play on a Big Ten roster and be from New Jersey it really will inspire a lot of other younger players to also um, take up the volleyball rather than maybe another sport that they weren't exposed that they were exposed to earlier so excited to have Rachel here with us Let's open up for questions here in the room. Go ahead, Lee. We find so I'm uh, I got home. Kayla, when, when you took over, you had like an almost entirely foreign roster. You told me that you were going to keep trying to get some foreign players, but you wanted to American, Americanize the roster. Mm -hmm. But with the announcement yesterday that Big Ten matches are now going to be on volleyball world, it brings you back into the international scope. Does mm -hmm. that change anything for you? Well, if you know anything about Rutgers, we're a very internationally based school. Obviously, we have access to major airports. We're you know, closer enough to New York City. That's a big draw for international players. So I see why the interest was there. But it was very important to me to build the brand across the United States. I wanted to, to make sure that the, the domestic players understood what competitive level we were aiming to aspire to be at Rutgers. And we've done very well and been very successful recruiting domestically since I've been there. However, Rutgers as a whole is one of the most diverse, if not the di most diverse uh, Big Ten institutions. And I don't want to lose our international flair entirely. So we will continue to be a mix of, of domestic and international players. But I think, as you'll see the roster, it will, st it will move from a fully international team with a few domestic players to kind of the reverse. But we will still, still incorporate it international players and they are very excited that their families get to see them play now. I spoke to a few of them yesterday. So thank you for that. Just along the same lines for you guys, has it been fun to play with international players and have you like gone to any of the homes, like a few day trips or anything like that? Because you've had so many teammates. Yeah, it's been a blast. Like we um, made plans to go to Greece. We made plans to go to Italy just because those were the, that's where they live. So all we really need to do is book a ticket. Um, it's been cool learning about their culture. We try their foods. We um, make dinner all together, and they bring what they eat for dinner, and we bring what we eat for dinner. So it's just been a really cool experience to learn about everyone. Yeah, definitely exactly what Keelan was saying about the flair. It's just you kind of come to college expecting one experience, and then you're on a team with practically 50% international players, and it definitely um, gives you a different perspective, but I've only had a positive experience with my teammates, and like Kaylin said again, it brings a little flair and makes things every every single day a little interesting, and I learn a little new things every single day, so. Last year was the first Thanksgiving that most of them had ever had, so that was pretty exciting to, um, we were home for Thanksgiving, and I think we had a team meal with at their house, and some of the items that were brought to Thanksgiving dinner were not your traditional Thanksgiving <laughs> items, but, but uh, you know, it, you know, it evolves good. over time, so, yeah. Uh, uh, let's hear some specifics. Well, 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 I was well, not there, well, so. Yeah, well, what were some of the things you weren't expecting? Tina brought, said she brought some potato, weird potatoes. Oh, she, did, she brought some weird potato concoction. I'm not even sure if it was Italian. She just made her own kind of thing, but yeah. not traditional turkey or Thanksgiving meal. So that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Matt, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I, um, Matt Brown, extra points and D1 ticker. 
Um, this is for, for any of you three. I'm, I'm curious that this is already an extremely competitive volleyball conference. Now this league in the next couple of years is about to get bigger and there's two other historically very strong programs coming in and programs that are very far away from Rutgers. I'm curious what you three think about the Big Ten expanding uh, in the near future. I think it's awesome. I think Big Ten's a great conference and adding those two teams in is just going to expand the competition and it's going to be cool to travel out there. Uh, been out there a few times, but it's crossway across the country, but I think it's going to be exciting and it's a cool experience. I'm really excited too. Like Chitty was saying, UCLA and USC are two great volleyball programs and they've been great volleyball programs in the past. And the Big Ten, again, is the greatest conference in the country. So just adding two more strong teams into the mix just kind of reaffirms our position as the best conference in the country. So I'm really excited. Yeah, and as, as the coach, obviously, there's you know a lot of things to consider. And as my vision for how the program moves forward and climbs the ladder in the Big Ten, yes, it is a big hill to climb, adding two more you know, historically top 25 programs. But I think it only expands our recruiting base. We do actively recruit out of the West Coast. And those players always ask, like, do I ever get to play in front of my home crowd? And now we get to answer yes. It's not just going to be during preseason or a tournament once every four years, but we can regularly get them in front of their family and friends. So that's really exciting for us. Pete, uh, Pete Ferrari, Big Ten Plus. Coach, you brought on uh, two new people to your staff, Abby and Bailey. Uh, what are they going to bring to the staff this year? So Abby Dietering came in as our recruiting coordinator. Obviously, she started and, and set and, and hit for Penn State. She was in two Final Fours, um, three Final Fours, I think. And um, she is a wonderful voice in the gym. She has a really wide range of skill set, obviously both hitting, and hitting, or hitting from the right side and setting. So she's mainly going to work with our setters. Um, even though she probably wants to work with our hitters, but <laughs> mainly working with the setters, um, you know, and playing for a legendary co coach and really um, bringing in all the knowledge of what it takes for you to be successful in this league, I think is very uh, inspiring for our players, but also motivating and telling of what's necessary of the work that needs to be put in. So she connects extremely well with a younger um, recruiting audience of when we have to recruit you know 15 16 year olds she's really good at creating those connections and being able to share her experience but she's been a great great advocate Bailey came in for um, as our director of operations and she played at George Mason so um, she you know has really kind of just learned that role over the last semester and I think she's very excited about working in in this conference and, and developing her skill set in more of an administrative role I don't know if you guys have anything to add. Oh. I was just going to say that obviously our coaches are really talented and we all learn a lot from them. But Abby having experience in the Big Ten is just another leg up. And she knows exactly what we need to be able to compete and you know bring it in the competition. So I really love hearing advice from her. And I know everyone else does on the team. So it's really nice to hear what she has to say, especially having experience playing. But if you hit the seam, she'll block you. Yes. <laughs> if you don't block her in the seam, she'll bounce that ball yeah. right down. She, so. was, she, was, she had like the winning hitting percentage, I think, all spring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we tell her that. Yeah. Uh, other questions here in the room? Coach, we do have one question. The, no, one question on the Zoom, real quick. Coach, can you talk a little bit about the move from uh, the rack, or from uh, college athlete to the rack and playing more of your matches at Jersey Mike's Arena now. Yeah, and, Jersey Mike's yeah, Arena. Exactly. So, uh, what, what has it done for your program to move into that, into that facility? Yes, I mean, this was a really huge goal for me from, from my interview process, but also just within the first season, I recognized that. As much as I love College Avenue Gym, and we still practice there, we just added some air conditioning in for preseason, so Ooh. excited for that. But um, the the opportunity to play in Jersey Mike's Arena in front of a larger crowd, in front of a more prof what I feel is a more professional environment, the opportunity to then be on the Big Ten Network Live, which was something that had never been done before for the program, was a major goal for me. And I was very grateful that we were given that opportunity. And it just shows the support that Rutgers is always putting into this volleyball program. It has, we were definitely behind when it came to facilities and some other things that some of our cohorts had had already, but Rutgers has really shown since I've been there 
the um, promotion of our sport and the investment they've made into it and moving us into the arena for matches is one of those major, major things that they've done for us. So very grateful for that. So Caitlin, since I've known you since before you took the job, and through the time you've been there, you've maintained an incredible level of optimism. And you stay up. It, are there times when it's hard because of the results? Like you haven't refined yourself in the process. It definitely is is hard, and I look to them because for me, I'm their leader, and I think that the team is reflective of what my attitude towards this process is. And I know what I signed up for, so to speak. I and they do too, right? They committed to this, and and we when, in the recruiting process, I'm very specific about what type of. Um, demeanor and an outlook and what our vision is or because it does take a very special person to come in and and suffer through some of those um, hard moments and what was said last night by the speakers was very very inspiring to me and I think to them as well because what how I look at it is a lot of times you do have some failure before you reach your success and throughout my career um, I've done this before you know, so they haven't, but I have. And my first go round, I, I challenge. I, I used to really think, am I doing this right? Am I making the best decisions? Am I going about the process correctly? But knowing that I have an educational background in change management and understanding some of the curriculum pieces that go into creating organizational change gives me some comfort because I know that there is a very specific process that has been documented and, and categorized by numerous people that are way smarter than I am, so that gives me some faith. But I think that the girls showing me in little ways that they're also bought in, and in big ways, just keeps me very hopeful. And um, I know we're gonna get there. I firmly believe it, so. Matt, yeah. maybe, maybe this is a stupid question, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering if maybe you three could be a little bit more specific about what some of those little changes that maybe people like us don't get to see as you're trying to um, dramatically change outward results uh, of, of, uh, in this kind of highly competitive environment. What does that look like? So I grew up 25 minutes away from Rutgers, so I've really been able to kind of watch Rutgers grow. I remember I used to go watch high school games, and I was like, oh, okay, like never really imagined myself playing here. But now that I'm here, I've really been able to see it from point A to whatever point we're at now. And even though, again, like you said, like we go through some tough times, and it's a tough conference to play in every single weekend, day in, day out, there's been massive changes, and I think especially in the culture, and I'm really excited for this year because I think we're going to bring a side of Rutgers that you guys haven't seen yet, so really excited for that. I was going to say, yeah, some of the little changes that you're talking about is like just holding each other accountable, not letting those little things, like if you're five minutes late, not letting that go unnoticed, making sure we all come to treatment early, making sure that we just all trust each other and just hold each other accountable, honestly, because I feel like that hasn't happened in the past. And so now that we're doing that, it's just, you can, you're gonna be able to notice. <laughs> yeah, and behind the scenes things, Rutgers has invested in our program from a budgetary standpoint. We're mid-range in the league now from a budget, and, the, and you see how that's reflected in some of our other Olympic sports who have been very successful within this league and within the NCAA. They were just a bit ahead of us in that change process. And you know, things like we, we have a, strength coach who works with just us and one other team now versus someone who was working with five other teams. We have our own sports medicine trainer who's just with us and, and a secondary team as well. So there's those are some things that really do matter that can change um, just what type of athlete we're able to bring in and recruit because they're getting that personal dedication. But we also did something that I think was kind of unique. We hired a communication consultant that worked with our team this past spring because as they talk about accountability, this was someone who, and I wasn't in these conversations, they can talk to more about this, but this was someone who really taught the, the um, women how to interact with each other both on the court in one way, how to communicate, and then how to communicate off the court as well, that you don't have to be the exact same in which way. So she was um, a really huge help, and I've, I've seen that reflected in just the way that the team interacts over the summer. I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Um, yeah, it was really a great experience. I think we underestimated how important team chemistry and team connection was. Barkas has always been a close team, but I think that when we really had the time to sit down and really talk about what makes this person different? What does this person need to really succeed on and off the court? I think you're going to be able to see like huge changes in our gameplay, and 
I think it's just something that's really exciting and will bring us to the next level. It's, it's very interesting because I don't think I've heard of many other departments reaching out to, to that to that kind of outside expertise before. Was that a, a Rutgers Athletic Department initiative or was that unique just to the women's volleyball program? It was unique to my brain. <laughs> I, 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 I yeah. think it's a good idea. Yeah, Absolutely. no, I have a I think that when I kept asking the team after each match, that was, you know, we have a, we had a very specific goal sheet for ourselves, and that was not to win the Big Ten. You know, we we created what are these baby steps that we have to take along the way, and we had the the last time Rutgers volleyball dot dot dot, and then some things like the last time we took a set from Penn State, the last time we took a, a road set, you know, and we were able to cross these things off. The last time we had someone setter of the week, you know, and we're slowly kind of building up to this bigger event and it is pretty neat and that evolves each year you know now it could be the next time we take two sets from Penn State but you know so slowly but um, whenever I asked the girls after a loss like what was the biggest issue communication kept coming back and sometimes that's just something that players say to not have to answer any other questions but I can but I took a mental note about that and um, it was something that stuck with me over the Christmas break and I'm like, okay, well, let's let's try this. And it was not a sports psychology route. It was very much a business organization. How do businesses, effective businesses, communicate with one another from a leadership standpoint to colleagues to you know everyone. So um, yeah, and, and we'll continue working with with this woman and and her team. And um, I think that that will be reflected in our gameplay for sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions here in the room. I have one final question on, on Zoom from, this is for Madison. Uh, can you talk a little bit about some, some players you expect to really develop this year and stand out for you? Yeah, um, the one player that I expect to really develop and stand out is Alyssa Kinkella, um, our Australian. Uh, she has been working so hard over the summer and I'm just really proud of her. And it's just crazy to see how much she's grown from freshman year to this year. And she's so much fun to watch. She's a great teammate. And I'm just really happy and excited for her. Any last questions in there? Go ahead, B. Sure. Um, Coach, you got recently the fifth straight ABCA Team Academic Award. How do you balance that now, especially in a world with NIL existence, you know, still trying to promote the academic side, again, five years straight, while balancing what may be um, ex uh, external influences? You know, Rutgers is an extremely challenging academic institution. I, I have a master's degree in education. So this is, for me, as it's at the top of my pyramid on my wall of things that are core values. And academics, for me, is at the, at the forefront. Obviously, being successful on the volleyball court and being successful in life are all things that I want all my players to succeed at. But um, the the investment in the academics. We have a wonderful academic advisor who really spends time and we've created a game plan that they meet with him once a week from the start of their freshman year all the way through graduation. Um, and that is just a touch it, touch base or it could be a much more extended conversation and it gives them some freedom to allow for some assistance what's already scheduled. <laughs> Whereas if not, they have to figure out a way to walk into his office and say, hey, can we meet? This is a pre-planned time. And, um, but I have not shied away from my players taking challenging majors. By 2023, I think we'll have four engineers on the team. Um, we have some pre-med, we have business, we have sports management, we have everything. And um, you know, I say, this is gonna be tough. This is something that you have to balance. And when you add in the NIL piece and a social life and all the things that a college student wants to do, there's only so many plates you can hold up in the air, but we really do spend time and have um, an open door policy with the coaching staff that if they need help and they need to figure out, we've we've done this. I didn't do NIL. I wish there was like NIL for coaches. It'd be great. There probably is, but <laughs> but um, you know they they have come for, for questions and advice. And again, I think having Abby on staff as well, who is much closer in age to them, who's recently gone through the the process of of balancing academics and school and everything else, um, is extremely helpful. So. Coach, appreciate the time today. Thank you. Love to you. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, Coach.
but you want to start with a quick opening statement and we'll take some questions. Sure, sounds good. Well, first off, thank you all for being here. Thanks for the Big Ten Conference, uh, Grace and Sue and her team for putting this together. You know, we're thrilled. I'm thrilled for the athletes to have this chance. Um, we had a great uh, event last night. Um, it was great to hear the commissioner talk, and uh, Raynell was able to speak. And it was just a really, really powerful moment and uh, a great, great night from start to finish. So uh, I'm thankful to be here. I'm also thankful to be on day two. Uh, it was kind of nice to talk to some other coaches who could kind of give us the lay of the land of what this is going to be like. So I know uh, Coach Ed was up here talking about the no tie policy. So <laughs> I, uh, I respect his decision on that, but Russ is retired. So I figured I had to learn how to tie a tie. And I spent about the last two days on YouTube learning how to do that. So I hope you guys don't judge me too hard. But I did want to just take a quick moment to say uh, you know, thanks to Coach Rose. Uh, I know it'll be weird with him not being in the conference, as Steve said, since 1991. But there's no chance I'm here working with these amazing athletes without him. So I just want to take this chance to say thank you. And uh, yeah, thrilled to be here. Questions, Pete? Uh, Pete Ferry, Big Ten Plus. Coach just announced you got an, ex an extension, so congrats on that. Talk us through your thoughts and uh, feelings on that. And, and players, what's it like uh, having that announcement drop? Yeah, um, it's been something we've been working on for a little bit, but uh, just thrilled with uh, the administration's support for us. Obviously, this is an incredibly tough conference. And uh, you know, I always thought it was cliche to say, you know, you need to support him as an, uh, you know, the administration. And um, you know, Damon and his whole executive staff have been like with us all the way. I think they believe in our vision. They support our vision. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled to be at Maryland. You know, I've been here for eight years now. And, uh, you know, I'll soon pass my time at Penn State, a number of years. And uh, I've had my three kids. And, you know, just, just really excited about where we're going. And uh, thankful that uh, the administration is supporting us in that vision. Yeah. Other questions? Leisure. Lee Fines off of volleyballmag.com. Add a loosely based depth chart. Nothing, nothing will hold you to, but give us some idea of who's what and where. At each position. Just from what we lost, to, you know, gaining from this year, or where do you, where, what, what yeah. it might look like the first match. Yeah, I mean, we've been a very good defensive team over the last couple of years, uh, especially from a blocking perspective. You know, I think uh, you know, we had a lot of grad transfers last year, and they brought a lot of personalities to the locker room. I think these guys would attest to the same. You know, we return a, a lot from last season um, and add a few young players. Um, we added a, a transfer from Temple to give us some depth at the pins, um, a local outside in Layla Ivy, um, another little DS from uh, uh, Missouri. So, you know, I think uh, our locker room is in a really good spot right now. Um, you know, I think that's one of the things that I probably learned in my first year as a head coach. We had some success in 2018, and uh, I probably got in the way of that in 2019, just wanting more success and not spending enough time on the culture. And uh, I've learned that lesson, and we're going to spend a lot of time making sure that we're trying to have success on the court, but also to make sure our locker room remains what it is. <laughs> Find out in uh, about seven days, yeah. Um, you're not, you're not you're not like, I, I was hoping for I, I, some names time tied in with position. Yeah, yeah. You want, like, we're starting at row five and, oh, like, okay. row, who are yeah. Who your top outside hitters? Who are your top middle? Fair, so fair. Who's going to set, you know? Well, we, we have uh, some competition at a few positions. You know, uh, we added Anastasia Russ, who was transferred from Pitt. Um, we've got a, a nice uh, red shirt, well, technically a sophomore, in Ellie Watson in the middle. And then, uh, you know, I think there's a really good chance that Raynell is probably going to start. I think that's probably a high likelihood. Um, you know, Sid has done a tremendous job as uh, being a leader for our program. Um, you know, she was in our COVID season and kind of won the locker room over about halfway through. And we had this amazing moment where we had a tough loss on the road. And during the COVID season, you had to play back-to-back -back nights. So night one, we lose, we're in the locker room, and she was obviously very disappointed and uh, you know, wanted to make sure it was clear that she was disappointed. And uh, that was a moment I remember she kind of had some fire in the locker room, and we walked out, and this one next to me says, I'll go to battle with her any day. And so these guys have been good leaders for the program, but I would uh, imagine that Sid will be leading the, the, the charge for us this year. And uh, you know, we're excited about Layla Ivy as a, tr a true freshman coming in. You know, uh, we've got a returner in Aaron Morrissey who uh, tore ACL in the first match of last season. Um, we're trying to get her back as, as safe and, and as fast as possible. So, um, yeah, we do have some competition battles, which I think is good for us. Um, this conference uh, demands that. You're going to have Knicks and people who are banged up. You've got to find ways to have success, even if that happens. Other questions in the room? Scott Beatty, WDWS in Champaign. Big picture. So many uh, long-established traditional power programs in the Big Ten. 
what's the path to keep climbing uh, into the upper tiers uh, of sure. the Big Ten, with no disrespect to, you know, wherever you're stand, finishing standing. Sure. This is a tough conference. Yeah, I mean, I think we know we've got to do it against the best. And so if you can do it in the Big Ten, then you put yourself in a position to be one of the best programs in the country. You know, we're thrilled by that. Obviously, with the addition of USC and UCLA, it's only going to get more challenging. But um, our big thing was to make sure that it's sustained success, not just a one-off in one year. And, um, you know, we had a pretty good year in 2017, pretty good year in 2018, and felt like we were getting close. Had a little bit of a setback in 19 and then the COVID year in 20. And so I think last year was a big moment for us to say that we're not going anywhere. We're, we're staying around. And, uh, you know, we just keep looking at um, breaking new ground, you know, achieving new things that we haven't been able to do. You know, it's been nice to be at Maryland joining the Big Ten because it's been a fresh history, realistically. So I think you've got a locker room and, and a, a staff of people who are trying to prove some people wrong. And, um, you know, they're here because they want to compete against the best and uh, see what they can do. Um, Brevin Kesey, Bucky's fifth quarter. Last year, um, defensively, especially at the start of the season, you guys were really solid, especially um, in the match against Wisconsin, which was one of the biggest wins, I think, in program history. Even, I think, the Twitter account said stuff like that. What was that like? Um, just kind of as, you know, you talk about building the program a bit. And, you know, are you looking for more shocks again this year like that? Yeah, I mean, obviously a huge win for us. Um, you know, the thing that I was probably the most proud of is there's a lot of people that were behind the scenes and a lot of previous players who put a lot of work and didn't have that opportunity to have that kind of moment. And, uh, you know, you go into the locker room and obviously we celebrate, sprayed a lot of water all over the place. Um, but then to get the texts and calls from former players who I've either coached or players that were before me to say thank you, you know, um, you know that, that was probably my favorite part. The win was great, but that was amazing. Um, the thing that I think followed up that, that made me very proud of the, the room was that, you know, this group did a really good job of trying to bury it and move forward because they don't want to just be a flash in the pan. They don't want to just be a one-off. And, um, you know, I think they were disappointed. The next night we got absolutely destroyed against Minnesota, and um, they did a good job washing that. And, you know, I think everyone was thrilled with last year but also disappointed in the same sense that we didn't get to the tournament. Um, you know, we had Penn State down 2-0 at home and had a chance to maybe get another signature win. Um, we were two points away from sending the Purdue match to five. We we're up 1-0 against Minnesota. So for us, I, I think we were happy with that moment. But I love that the locker room is more interested in, hey, how does this sustain itself? How is it consistent? How, uh, you know, we just don't want to be a, you know, a one-hit wonder. Yeah. Can I add on to that? I guess the biggest thing that we did was stick to the culture. A lot of us, we stayed true to ourselves. Being on our side, it was really important that we're going to play our game no matter what team it is, no matter if it's a win or lose. So I think it was really important that each year we're making breaking records, we're making attacks on different teams and also building that culture. So it's really important that we're doing that. I have questions. Right now, obviously, you're a decent blocker. Um, <laughs> is that something that you had as a kid, or was there a moment, maybe high school club, even as a freshman, where some switch went on and you start doing it better? Yeah, so I actually started with basketball, um, and then I switched to volleyball later on. I do have to thank my coaches for, you know, helping me with blocking because it's so technical. My volleyball IQ wasn't the very best when I was a, a freshman in college. I'm still learning myself, but it was, it was, you know, the way the coaches are coaching me. So they definitely learned who I am as a player, as a person, to help me with that. Yeah, just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> When we were recruiting her when she was 15 years old, she used to wear this headband that said libero. She was like a 6'4 kid walking around. I was like, who is that kid? But you'd go to these tournaments, and there'd be 80 courts, and you'd just see this head pop up, and you could read libero. And I was like, I want to recruit that kid. So. Yeah, Dan, yeah. Dan, one of the six rotations. I want to start with Coach, but then either one of you as well. Do you notice a difference in the season when your Big Ten schedule is a little bit more backloaded, you know, facing the top of the conference in the back end of the season as opposed to the front end? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think it's interesting because I was here, I was with the conference when we was a true double round robin, you know, and now it, it seems like it's a little bit more challenging to get in routines. Um, you know that we try to break up the season in the sense that you might have two or three tough weeks on the road and we try to uh, shuffle and kind of prepare that. Um, that is a big challenge and something we're looking at this year. We have a lot of Wednesday, Sundays, a random schedule. So it's not just level of competition. It's where you have to go and how fast you have to turn around. You know, last year we beat Wisconsin and, you know, we're on a flight the next morning to get to Minnesota and have to play on the road after being at home. That's, that's something that was new for us. So I, I think the big thing from us is we're just trying to gain experience from that. And um, I think that's why our program has taken steps is that, you know, we've been around long enough to know. I don't think there's any shock value anymore. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge. You know, going back and forth plus school, volleyball, it's it's huge, but it's building who we are as characters, you know, to help us prepare for the future. Yeah, it's definitely an adaptation to learn 
um, that turnaround going from Wisconsin right to Minnesota and then coming back to Penn State on a Wednesday was a, a quick turnaround of a week, but it's definitely something we're all learning and growing together and it's that struggle and that difficulty is part of what makes us so close in such a family. Follow Would you rather see me play some of the tougher teams in the front half of the season or the back half of the season? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think maybe towards the back half, the front half gives us a lot of opportunity to develop and see what we need to work on individually. So I'd probably choose the back half. Go ahead. Lincoln Arnie, Omaha World Herald. You're talking about the, the travel um, difficulties that you've experienced. Uh, in a couple of years, it's going to get a little more challenging. I mean, being Maryland's on complete opposite side as the LA schools, what are your thoughts about the Big Ten expanding and the challenges and opportunities that provides? Well, I, I'm I'm thrilled. I'm excited. You know, uh, we're already a great conference, and we're just getting that much better. So I, I'm not sure how the travel works into that. I think that was one of the things that our our athletic director talked to us and said, "Hey, listen, we've had some thoughts about this. We haven't finalized how how the travel will actually work." You know, I don't know if there's a way that you can do sort of a uh, off weekend or, you know, there's some way to, you know, break down where you don't have to play back to back road trips. I'm not sure how that's going to look, um, but I do think that's going to be interesting. I'm also curious to see what the breakdown is and rotations. You know, now that we've got more teams, how, how do you balance playing one team once or twice? That's going to be very interesting. So uh, me personally, I'm excited. Uh, we've had some players from California, so I think that kind of helps open some doors from us from a recruiting perspective. But uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a beach guy, so I don't mind going out west. Yeah, I'm excited too. I love competition, new teams, new people to play. They're both great historical programs. Um, so I really can't wait to get out there and play them. I know it'll be a little bit more difficult with travel, but we have such a great support system behind us. I'm sure they'll find a way. Yeah, it's, we, we were in a uh, four-team tournament when we first got to Maryland with uh, Steve about eight years ago. And I remember we scheduled to play Washington and USC, and we wanted to make sure that we were going to be on a big stage, you know. And walking into the locker room, you would have thought we killed someone's dog. They were, what, what are we doing? Why did you, like, put that uh, up on this stage? And, uh, you know, I think that's a, that's a cool testament to see where we are as a program now, where these guys are like, hey, let's go get it. Let's go see it. Let's see if we can get it done. Pat Henderson from the American Volleyball Coaches Association. Raynell, can you just share a little bit more about some of the things that you do outside the classroom that you talked a bit about last night at the, uh, at the reception? But just talk a little bit about that, if you will. Yeah, um, social justice work is my thing right now. Um, you know, working on activism and trying to make the world a better place, equal rights, human rights in general. Um, I want to make everyone more equal. I want more minorities in this room, basically. I want to <laughs> see inclusion. I want to, you know, help people out, get people up, like what Kevin talked about last year. Um, not last year, last night. Getting people up on the elevator with you, just bringing people up behind you. You mentioned your, uh, for any of you, you mentioned your defense and obviously the strength of your middle block. Uh, what's the next step uh, dimension wise for you this year uh, in addition to that strong defense? Yeah, I mean, we want to obviously follow that up and make sure that that's kind of our identity. You know, one of our um, beliefs as a program is uh, relentless pursuit. You know, one of the things that I really enjoy is when someone tells us your team is fun to watch because you guys play extremely hard. You know, and while we block a lot of balls, you know, Milan, our, our libero, is flying around making saves and, you know, just uh, diving into the stands. You know, that brings energy to how we play. So I think, um, you know, we want to obviously follow up last year's success with more success, but we do need to get a little bit more offensive. And I think that's been a big point of emphasis in the spring. You know, I think COVID taught us that year, you know, we didn't have a lot of time to train. It was a more just prepping. And um, it was really nice this past spring to get a lot of time. And we had to really teach most of the players what a spring looked like. You know, most of them had never been through it. And so I think it was a, it was a very productive off season for us. Yeah, I guess attacking as well. It was completely right. Um, I guess blocking, you hit the top of the ceiling and then what's the next thing? So I guess, you know, once you're getting older as a player, which I am entering my fifth year, but finding the little details of perfecting that. Lee, go ahead. Yeah, I was at that tournament eight years ago. That's yeah. a good way to describe yeah. it. Um, you don't have any international players. Right. But it, with the announcement that the Big Ten is going to be shown internationally now in the whole world and with other programs doing it, obviously sure. there's something there. Are you planning on expanding those horizons or is it 
Not yeah, so it's not something we would exclude. I think it'd be good for us. Last year we had uh, P, who was a uh, Latvian, and it was kind of funny. We had four or five transfers. So my first meeting with this team, we did a PowerPoint and we put up a map and we asked if everyone could find where these hometowns were. And uh, you know, you'd be surprised where some people couldn't find, uh, you know, Nevada and couldn't find some certain states. But uh, um, the the best one was we did the last one, and it was uh, Paula, and she's from Latvia, and I had no idea where that country even was. Um, but her personality and just her teaching us about her culture and her upbringing, I think, gave us a lot more empathy in the locker room. And uh, you know, I think there is a ton of value in that. You know, we we have a big cultural value that's be you aligned with us, and you know, I'm good with different person personalities being in the room. And uh, you know, Paula showed us that. So it is something we would be open to. We we haven't done it um, a lot, but yeah, we would be open to it. Any other questions, Pete? Rinell, you wrote a great piece, Selma to Montgomery. Um, now that the dust has settled, it's been a few weeks and since you've been there. What are you going to take from that experience to bring to your team uh, to help grow that culture as well? Yeah, I guess my team did ask me about the trip. Um, I honestly, I'm angry with history. It's repeating itself, and you know I want to make change, and it's hard to do that as one person. So hopefully, inspire my teammates to you know continue to grow, continue to talk to other people that they're not comfortable with, and just trying to I guess find ways to make better change in their own environments. But we all heard from a coach yesterday, and, and you talked about it too, the, the IQ needed to be a middle blocker. And even in the last five years, how much more complex blocking has become. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something you've always just only known. Mm -hmm. uh, but take us through what kind of the IQ is needed, because a lot of times you think it's the setter or the libero. Uh, but really, like, talk about middle blockers and, and what you kind of have to scout from game to game and how difficult it is to have that high. Yeah, yeah. I think scouting is most the most part of the you know game. Um, they've seen me scout and all the highlighters that I use in the recruiting and the scouting. But yeah, it's basically learning every single player, every single rotation, learning what's going to happen because you never know. Especially if they do change rotations, it's about being ready for basically everything. But it's it's a lot of fun once you get it down and you're in the flow. But yeah, it's it's a lot of work as a middle and also a setter as well. But it's very important. Add a question. Coach, ladies, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Great. Good morning, everyone. Just uh, glad to see everyone here. Uh, Toyossi. I always want to make sure I say that right, Toyossi, because I just call her Toy, but it's Toyossi, right? Toyossi. Got that right. <laughs> and uh, AJ, Am Amaya, we're just really privileged to be here, grateful to be here. Um, it's incredible to be part of this game changing event. Um, you know, what the Big Ten's done, the athletic directors, the SWAs, you know, put all this so that we could have this day. And I really appreciate everyone's work and, and the media here. Thanks for being here um, and promoting our sport. I think you're going to find out it's a win win situation for both volleyball and you because uh, this sport is on the rise, as everybody knows. As a coach, you know, you make decisions every day off numbers, off evaluations you know, on, on observations. And so my, the numbers I look at, half of the population is over 50% women, all right? Uh, and so they, they drive a great big market. And their number one choice as a sport is volleyball. It is the number one choice for women. And so uh, you're seeing young girls choose volleyball, their mother's bringing them to these volleyball tournaments and their father's on the sidelines really getting into this sport. It is something that's growing dramatically quick and, uh, and it has a force that's going. And then you add the Big Ten Network with all the TV uh, improvements that are happening and uh, Media Day. Uh, I think you're seeing something very special grow here. And you're, you're seeing, I think, a growth sport spurt for this, this sport that's about to really take off. So we're grateful to be a part of Iowa and, and helping Iowa get to the top of that. Questions here in the room? <clears throat> Jim, you're not naive to the challenges that you took on when you got there. Can you talk about what those were and then what continue to be as you head into the season? Yeah, there's challenges, but you know, when I look at Iowa, I, I, I see gold mine. I see, you know, there's there's so much that Iowa has to offer to offer these players and, and the incoming players that 
uh, not many places can. Uh, being in this conference and having the opportunity to work in, up into the biggest and best conference in the country is, is a big deal. And, and when you look at Iowa, the commitment, the, the people in that state love volleyball. They're just yearning for it to be a great program. And they're not very much unlike Nebraska people as far as uh, the, the state. So there's so much growth uh, to me. So I just see gold mine whenever I see the black and gold. And, and that's what gold reminds me of, you know, when I look at it. The opportunities are all here. And, and I've been so impressed with the ladies on this team, the returners, how they jumped right on. And, the, and they, they really want to get this right. And uh, so we had a great spring. We haven't lost a game yet. And we're looking forward, you know, to what's coming. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, Matt Brown, extra points and D1 ticker. Uh, Jim, I, yesterday we heard from several coaches that expressed some, um, some frustration with some of the NCAA rules regarding when they're allowed to be in the gym or, or, or work with their athletes over the summer, especially compared to what those schedules look like for other sports. Uh, I'm wondering if you and, and, and either of your, your athletes here had any thoughts about uh, how that's set up right now, whether you want it to, to look different. Yeah, and I'll start just, I, I mixed emotions because I want to be in there. And, I, you know, as coaches want to help them to get things rolling. But I also love that their voices are being developed during this time and their leadership. Our senior core really lead a lot of the, the practices and the returners. So there's value in that. So I see this changing. I think next summer it changes. I hope it does so that we can mix this where we could be in the gym some, but we're still going to have our, our players in there, you know, developing over the summer as well. But. Well, ask the ladies. Um, I I agree with him. Also, it was very tough at first, um, not having our coaches in there. But I think like our seniors definitely stepped up to the plate with just leading our new girls, leading the returners, just leading everyone, um, making sure we're all in on time, getting what we need to do, and getting out on time. Yeah, going into my fifth year, I think that. It's not bad that we don't have coaches in the gym, but I just wish that they could provide feedback for us. Like, even if we could just record practices and discuss things with them, because it's like we can't teach our new teammates like certain techniques that they definitely can. So if there was like one change I would make, like, of course, we're developing our voices, but if we could just have some feedback from the coaches, that would be like perfect. Other questions in the room, Pete? Uh, Peter for a Big Ten Plus. For AJ and Toy, uh, your coach has had success everywhere he's gone. Tulane, Baylor, Wyoming, Pnee. Of course you can buy into knowing coach has that winning culture, but what has he specifically taught you to make you believe that both of you can be successful and Iowa can be a successful program? Okay. Um, just his, the way he carries himself, you just know. Like, he walks into a room and he just commands attention and he just makes us all feel like we can trust him and trust his, like, path that he's taking, this, taking us on. Um, love, trust, communication, sacrifice, like, that's the four pillars we stand on as a team. And I just feel like you can feel that within the practice plan. You can feel it within, like, everything that we do as a team. So that's how it was easy to buy into him. He came in and he taught us to love each other first. And that's something that we really never had. Like we all like kind of um, like just battled like with different personalities and stuff, but the more that we've come together this spring, I definitely see where he's taking us. Um, I agree with Amaya, just showing that he cares for us every day in practice, every day out of practice. There was one time I had like a terrible accident. He was the first one who texted me, um, just making sure I was okay. So it's not just in the gym; it's also out of the gym the way he uh, carries himself. So. Hopefully we avoid those terrible <laughs> accidents. A motor scooter was involved. <laughs> so. <clears throat> I would love to, but I don't think I'll win that war yet. No, he, he would not <laughs> win. <laughs> win that war. Amaya, you've been there a long time. Yeah. And all of a sudden going into this year, you have a new coach, a whole bunch of new teammates, a couple of new freshmen. What's that like and what's the challenges of bringing like a, a whole new group together? Because it's, it's not just a couple of people. Right. I feel like at this point I'm an expert. This is my second new coach. <laughs> like, well, technically it's my third coach, my second new coach. So it's just like I'm I'm very flexible as a person. I'm um, really good at just trying to bring people together. I'm always my teammates' number one fan. So I just try to get them like used to the culture, the coach, and like our routine. So it's it's unique. It's a very unique experience because I'm like the mom on the team. Like I very much so like make sure everyone's okay, make sure everyone gets on the same page. So. 
I would say it's been really hard because I feel like a lot of the responsibility has fallen on like the older players, but I don't know, I kind of like it. it. Like It's definitely helping with my professional development. So, I don't know, it's a unique one for sure. Jim, how many your first year transfers? We've got seven transfers, two freshmen coming in. <clears throat> <laughs> More than half the team. <clears throat> but it's the eight returning that really have set up the foundation of what we've done uh, over the spring. So really proud of this group. They've, they've turned into a team just in that little bit of time. Jim Wolsey from the State Journal. Jim, this is obviously a historic event. Do you see this catching on? Other conferences will jump on board. No, my, my phone's buzzing. Coaches in other leagues watching this, rooting this on, honestly. and because they want their, their leagues to, to mimic this and, and to grow the sport because we know the potential this sport has. We just It's so underdeveloped and it's ready to really emerge and I, the Big Ten's setting the, the standard. And they're, they're just waiting to be able to go in their, their meetings and say, hey, the Big Ten is, you know, we need to. And, and it's going to happen. Any questions in the room? The after game, she will be just crawling off the floor. Um, you know, we <laughs> she wants the ball as well. And and with in our style, we we really use our middles more than anybody. And and I think Amaya really enjoyed that when we had that first conversation. Uh, I always watch the middles to see how scared they are to be the you know some of the primary attackers. And she was just glowing, just waiting for the opportunity. And this spring. She showed it. She played lights out and led her team in kills, which is tough for a middle to do. But yeah, she can do it. Um, I have to agree. I mean, if you want to set me, I'm going to be there. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like um, I'm really excited for this because in the spring, like I was really the only middle. And so um, I didn't even want to leave. Like I didn't want to get out the game. So it's just like I'm super excited for like the option to be able to like get the most kills in my career. Like just because I'm in my fifth year doesn't mean like I'm getting old. You know what I'm saying? Like this, I'm a spring chicken. Like this is like <laughs> the best shape I've ever been in. So I'm super excited for this season. Like watch out for my stats. <clears throat> Other questions there, Matt? Yeah, I've, I've got I've got one more. I'm I'm we we've, we've written a lot about how women's volleyball athletes in general have been able to have across the country multiple NIL opportunities. Clearly, this market has changed a lot over the last year. I'd love to hear a little bit about your experiences, about what changes you've seen, whether it's been easier to find opportunities or if opportunities have changed um, over the, between you know, this summer and last summer. Um, I think it's definitely easier to find opportunities for NIL. Um, you just have people hitting you up all the time, sliding in your DMs, not in that way, but just like <laughs> reaching out to you, just um, wanting them to, wanting you to represent their company. So I think it's a lot easier um, for sure. I personally feel like it hasn't been utilized the way it should have been just because only certain athletes are going to get certain deals and everyone knows that that's why they wanted this thing to pass but it's just like for those of us who really do want to get into the market like I would just love more guidance you know because I would love to represent so many different companies especially like with my stance in like social justice and things like that I would love for more companies to reach out to me so I just don't know how to socialize with them or like who to contact or like what they're looking for so I don't know I just feel like a little bit more guidance in that aspect would be really helpful because you know like your football players your basketball players they're going to get the most most sponsorships, but for women's sports, it's not the same. Not even an island? Mm, not really. I mean, for Caitlin Clark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Other questions in the room? Scott. Yeah. Scott Beatty, Champagne, WDWS Radio. Uh, you're surrounded by uh, powerhouse programs on the border states. Where do you see you needing to, is there an area of the country you need to break in recruiting wise? Uh, for the long term, Iowa. You know, we need to get the best players out of that state because the best players have gone elsewhere. So we start there, and then we go to the region, and now we can go coast to coast as the conference continues to grow as well. But you know, you're going to find that core group within the region of Iowa, and uh, you know, we're going to hit the state really hard as well. You see some Iowa kids on Nebraska, Wisconsin; they did pretty well. 
So um, it's making sure we, we, you know, Caitlin Clark picks Iowa, best basketball player in the country by far, in my opinion. And, um, yeah, it's just there's some great talent in the area, and we can start it there. Other questions? Amai, we had a question come in on Zoom. Uh, you talked about social justice in your trip to Selma in Montgomery last month. Can you little, talk a little about your experience with that and what you learned from that trip? Yes. Um, I've always been super passionate about civil rights and social justice. That's something that I think is a pillar of my personality and something that I will always fight for. So the trip to Selma was super, super fun. It was like super informational. Like. I feel like I learned so many things, but I also already knew so many things. So it's just like nice being like reminded of my history, where like my people have come from, like what we've accomplished, and like like how far we have left to go in this movement. So I think that it's a trip that more people should take. I feel like we should go back and do more community work, more community outreach, just help build that community back up to where it used to be as a pillar of like the civil rights movement, as a pillar for black people. Like, I think that we have a lot more to do with reaching back out to people and helping them um, get to where that we know that they can be. So there's a lot more work to be done. And I, and I will say uh, some of the conversations I've had with both these young ladies, it's just um, been ins inspirational. Uh, some great conversations that we I think are, we're all growing. You know, my life mission is to love and serve those around me, and 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 she, both all our players, but especially these two, have opened my eyes to doing that even better for our team and people around us. Um, they make our team a better place, and uh, hopefully that just continues to go throughout Iowa and the people around us. Time for a couple more questions here in the room. Anybody has? Lincoln. Lincoln Army on Hall World Herald. Jim, what, from your previous stops as head coach, what do you think is most similar to what you're encountering in Iowa, and what lessons can you draw upon those? It's a good question. Um, you know, I, when I went to Baylor, they were at the bottom of the Big 12, and Big 12 was pretty good back then. We had Nebraska and A&M and Missouri and, and, and Colorado in that league with everybody. So it was, at the time, one of the top two. I, you know, I, so I learned a lot through that progress to move them up. Uh, into a top 20 team. We made the Sweet 16, and, and we broke every record there. And I feel like all the lessons I learned are, are going to be a part of helping us do this at Iowa. And what I learned is that you can't do it by yourself at all. You, you've got to have a collaborative effort. The team's got to have a voice. They've got to help push this train. And uh, But I'll draw a lot on that. I feel like I'm 20 times the coach I was through that experience now. And hopefully that helps me serve my players even better. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll just start by saying I, I know I heard some some commentary yesterday about this is this is awesome. I mean, um, you know, we've been pushing to try to promote the sport for a long time, and and I know like Media Day has been uh, you guys that are sitting right here. Uh, as a as a one person show, so I appreciate your efforts up until now. But this is great that the Big Ten uh, has put this together uh, uh, to promote not only our sport but also women's athletics, and uh, just proud to be a part of it and uh, try to continue to to push the sport as best we can. And uh, looking forward to another great year, competitive season as as always has been. And uh, yeah, just looking forward to get after it. Questions here in the room. Pete, uh, Pete for Big Ten Plus. Coach, you've had such a history with the Big Ten. What does it mean to you personally to have the Big Ten itself be the first one to have a media day like this? Um, I think it's great. I mean, like I like I opened with, I, I I'm not going to say I would expect nothing less, but uh, you know, I, I I just think it's that's a part of what comes with being here. Always pushing limits, and just like Commissioner Warren said yesterday, we're always trying to push that ceiling higher and higher, and and make other people follow us, not be followers, and so. Um, I, I believe that, that we're doing that right now, and uh, again, happy to be, to par uh, be a part of it and, and to continue that tradition uh, uh, through the sport and, like I said, throughout all athletics as well. A question for Lee. Lee Feinswap from volleyballmag.com. Chris, every year, I'm kind of generalizing, but it's kind of true, it seems like your team is good, but you kind of stay under the radar for some reason, and then all of a sudden, mid-November into December, you're, you're always good. Is there a method to your madness there? Is that coincidence? <laughs> Or is it, you know, you <laughs> I see mean, question for the players. Yeah. But, uh, no, but that's not, uh, that's not unfair. Yeah, okay, no, no. I, I think you're correct. You know, I, I think we always talk about just improving one day at a time and, and just taking every day for what it's 
what it's worth and just and just try to improve with everything every single step of the way and some years you've got you can put it all together and string it together but you know if, if you have an injury or a sickness or an illness and sometimes you know the conference isn't going to go light on you then all of a sudden the people are going to oh your best player is sick or your your best middle is hurt or whatever your people are going to keep coming after you and so some of it is stroke of luck too right and so i think with last year as an example we kind of hit uh, we had a nice win against Penn State, and then we had like three weeks where we, we were out with one of our main starters and just kind of, I wouldn't say it fell on a slide, it just didn't do as well as we wanted to. Finished seventh in conference, and then, like you mentioned, we make it to the tournament, and, and I, safe to say nobody wants to see us in the tournament. We've always, we've always pushed that edge, and um, we talk about being great risk takers. Um, you know, while we're while we're playing in this tough conference, and that, that prepares us uh, for the end of, end of the year. And so, um, I think it's just mostly with the messaging, and and like I said, playing in this conference prepares you for just about anything. And I think you've seen that not only with us, but you've had uh, teams that have you know six teams in the in the Sweet 16, you know, four teams in the Elite Eight, two teams in the Final Four for the last you know, six, seven years, I, I think that the records kind of speak for themselves. But we're happy to be a part of that. And, and like I said, we just try to do this one day at a time. And uh, we want to start, we, we want to finish better than we started uh, every single season. And uh, I'm proud to say that we've done that for for majority of the seasons that, we, that we've had. Follow up on that is how much does, um, is, does it feel like it's all about the tournament? You know, be playing your best volleyball into late November, December. Uh, and how do you balance that with a desire to win the Big Ten. Yeah, well, you got to get there. <laughs> I, I think that's always going to be the goal to win every single game we can. You know, the reality of that happens is, uh, you know, it's it's not great. You know, just because, like I mentioned, every single every single matchup, whether you're playing at home or you're playing on the road, you're going to have, uh, you know, a Final Four type matchup every single time you step on the floor. And that, and I'm talking not just the top teams in our conference. I'm talking one through fourteen. Um, you know, if I can remember instance last year, we go five with Rutgers and uh, they played lights out and then we go to Penn State the very next day and beat them and, you know, it seemed what seemed to be an easier game. <laughs> but that's just a part of what what the conference is. And so you really just it teaches us uh, coaches and the players how to, again, just kind of take everything for what it's worth, cherish those victories, making sure you, you're really celebrating every victory that you have and then continually learn from the, the win or the loss and to so hey we did well this game and this is what we did well um, and then if we didn't do well what what can we you know shore up and and get ready for for the next game question yeah. uh, Drew Freeberg daily line uh, coach you have recruiting pipelines across the Midwest overwhelmingly Midwestern team this year but this year you brought in Sophie from Seattle and the Big Ten is now set to broadcast matches internationally. Uh, how important is it to you to get recruits like that from all over the country and even internationally? Yeah, we got Hawaiian too, so we got, we're, we're we're branching out. Uh, I think we've had players from all over, but yeah, our you know I think most of our rosters are going to look uh, you know fairly regionalized. I think that's pretty standard across the country. Um, and so you know you're always looking to bring in the best, no matter where they come from. And uh, you know I'm I'm proud that we have great players from the region and. Um, but it's it's also about we're, we're trying to be the best conference. You're trying to be one of the best teams in the best conference. You're going to have to look any, anywhere and everywhere and, and try to, uh, uh, you know, promote that and, and to get players from all over who want to be here and want to be a part of something special. Diane, is this true that you were a freshman at redshirted Jordan's senior year? Yes. So you practiced with her? Yes. That year, so you made her into what she is. Thank you. <laughs> no, well, could you talk about being in the gym with her and then the successes she had? Probably, probably thinks pretty cool, but influences she might have had on you that year. And then I know she visits once in a while. Yeah, I mean, she's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> she's awesome. But uh, I think just being in the gym, how much confidence she had in our team. Um, Obviously, she's really good at volleyball, and so whether she knew it or not, I was kind of watching what she does. And as a freshman, I think everyone kind of does that, try to, you know, integrate yourself into the program. But um, just the way she um, – I remember our match against Wisconsin at Wisconsin, we ran out of subs, and one of our DSs had to play front row. And it was, like, either a train wreck or it was going to work. And Jordan, like, facilitated this amazing – defense and offense and we won that set and it was like you know jaw-dropping and so just from um, that season she's 
she's a great role model, and um, whenever she comes back in town, she always texts me or we talk. And so, yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool to have her in front of me. Lincoln, our new Omaha World Herald. Um, Coach, I think you had three or four spring matches were canceled. Where does that put you as far as developmental-wise for, for going into the season? And how does having a such a re experienced roster, does that kind of offset any maybe missed opportunities you had in the spring? Yeah, I think uh, you know we added some players uh, uh, towards the end, obviously our freshman class, and then we added the transfer, uh, Caleb Burbage, at the end. So I, I, I look at the spring as, as full development. And you're you know whether you're playing competition or not, it was unfortunate we had to cancel those matches, just had some illnesses we, we couldn't recover from. Um, but you know the team does a lot of their work in the summertime with without us there, and I I, I wish that we could work with them. But uh, I know we're trying to push for that as a sport. But it's also I, I do believe in the the uh, the good teams will get, continue to get better. Um, I think there's that Mia Ham quote, quote where it's you know it's it's you're drenched in sweat when nobody's watching is is where that's that's going to get made. And so I know these players have been working hard uh, all summer and. Yeah, you like to have that time. You like to have those matches to, have to kind of see what you got in front of a crowd. But we've also not been in front of crowds before, as the last couple of years has, has shown. And uh, I know these players are going to be ready to, to play come uh, next week. Can you follow up on what you said, too? I mean, the development happens in the summer. Are you pleased with where the team's at, too? And he mentioned that one of the things they're pushing for is that contact. You wish that was an option to have during the summer months. Yeah, I think our team is in a good spot this summer, just with us not having um, as much competition in the spring. I think we still playing like we did have that competition in the spring this summer. So it's really exciting to see us work hard every day and prepare for the season. So I think we're in a good spot. Matt Brown, extra points and D1 ticker. Uh, a quick question here for, for Kennedy and Diana. I, we've, we've had this, um, these conversations you know, over the last day or so about, hey, women's volleyball is, is ascending. We have this media event. We're on linear television more often. It's becoming a bigger, uh, a growing sport. I'm curious what, what advice either of you would have if you were asked what you would want to do to change to make the sport better from an, uh, from an athlete academic perspective competition perspective, anything from your experience that you want to change to help college volleyball? Um, we just kind of talked about it. I would say just having that extra time with our coaches in the yeah. summer. I know like other sports do have the opportunity to work with their coaches over the summer, so I think that would be nice to help us even prepare us more for our, con our season. I think I always kind of find myself comparing to men's basketball and football mm -hmm. and it is pretty obvious that you know they they make a lot of profit, but I I want to be the ones that people compare to. You know, um, we want to compare to women's volleyball and not just women's but men's too. And so um, I think it's important to be an ally to our men's side of the um, sport. And so I don't really have an, a, a specific example, but I want to be the ones that people are looking toward. Sort of related, but a couple of weeks ago, Diana, I saw on Twitter you signed with Campus Inc. And uh, a few days ago, Sky Clark, Arter Sikowski are also representing. Uh, can you maybe touch on what that opportunity is like to be able to grow your brand and be among that group of athletes on campus? Ken actually signed before me, and she has <laughs> some merch out, so go. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but um, I, the NIL stuff is really cool. Um, I'm personally not the best at branding myself, but I think it it gives me a little bit of insight into the real world. And you know, if I want opportunities, I have to go get them. And so we are presented with um, cool things like this, and they approach me and uh, you know take this opportunity and not take advantage of that. So, Matt, yeah, I, I get on that note. You know, I've. I, our publication's written a ton about NIL, and clearly this market now is very different from where it was last summer. Brands are approaching it differently. Schools are providing different information. How has, how, how has that process changed for, for you two, uh, both in terms of what you're getting from Illinois and what you're seeing out there uh, in, in the greater you know, NIL space? For me, I I still want my sport and my academics to be the forefront of my priorities, and so um, 
not a lot has changed in my life, but I think that even more doors were open for us. And um, even from the beginning, you know, I uh, I feel like it was a lot like, you know, go brand yourself, you know, ask other uh, companies um, what you can do for them. But now we have people approaching us. And so even from last year to this year, it's, it's growing. And um, I think it's kind of cool that every athlete has that opportunity. Yeah, I would agree. Um, just being presented with the opportunity is amazing. Like Diana said, like volleyball and academics is obviously important, but like we're adding the extra baggage now with NIL, but at Illinois, the support system has been great. Everybody's been helping. Um, we have like a special guy that helps us with that. So it's been really helpful. Coach, you've done such a good job of keeping so many of the players you have, transfer portal becoming a more and more popular thing. What's it been like to not only keep two great players that are next to you, but uh, keep the squad intact and have them buy into what you're coaching? Yeah, I, I, I think it's an interesting question because I don't think it's avoidable. You know, we've had to transfer every year, uh, I think one every year to, to be exact. And that's going to happen. You know, there's going to be players, you know, some of ours have been, you know, due to injury as an example, and uh, unfortunately. Um, so we haven't really had too much of an exodus in terms of players going out, but we've had a few come in. So I think it's great if you need to fulfill a spot and you need to have some depth or whatnot. But uh, overall, I'm, I'm pretty big on loyalty, so I'm not looking to make like the, the transfer portal, uh, portal a big priority moving forward. Um, but you know, for those players that are out there that maybe they didn't find a great fit first time around, you know, we we feel like we've created a good culture and and that we've had a good thing going, and we're happy to accept anyone that wants to be with us. But uh, I think that's also the reason why people aren't leaving us either, because we have created that culture, and and uh, it's something we continue to do. And you know, we we commit to these players for four or five years, however long it takes them to get through their career. I want to make sure we fulfill that commitment, because I think that's important. Other questions? Back for a last uh, for Kennedy and Diana. Well, I don't know if what's the last year anymore, but um, it's sort of a senior year, right? Um, is there any different mindset or vibe you're feeling going into this in a leave it all out there kind of way? Um, I don't think that I really have like regretted any of my uh, effort on the court before this, but. Um, you know, being an underclassman, you always hear about the upperclassmen, and they're like, oh, my body hurts, and I'm getting so old, and stuff <laughs> like that. But yeah, um, <laughs> but um, I was just explaining to one of my teammates the other day, I don't really feel that yet. And so I think just uh, my body like is speaking to me, and I'm like, I'm excited, I'm rejuvenated, I'm ready to go. And so I don't think in that aspect um, it's any different. And this may be my last season, and but also like you have to take every point like it's your last. Um, you know, injuries unfortunately come here and there, and so uh, I I guess I just don't really take for granted any play that I have. I would agree. Um, I don't think my mindset has changed at all. I know as a team we talked about like we made the tournament, made it to the Sweet 16 last year. Like that's our standard. So as a team, I think that mindset has shifted because we always want to make the tournament. We always want to be like at the top of it. So as a team, that was our mindset shift this year. Got time for a couple more questions here. I think to start out with, there just there's so much gratitude for this uh, entire past couple days. Uh, looking at a a room full of, of people here that are that are that are trying to shine a spotlight onto onto our sport. Uh, I think this has been a first class. Uh, they've just uh, it's it's been done really really well. So there's there's a lot of appreciation, a lot of excitement for. 
uh, for what we're about ready to, to get into a new season here in about six days or, or so. I'm excited to, to coach this team. Uh, we've got uh, here, got uh, Anna Smirak and Sarah Franklin here, but uh, you know, excited about a lot of the players uh, that are uh, that are coming back and and um, uh, new journey. All right, let's open it up for questions, folks in the room. Pete. Uh, Peter Ferry, Big Ten Plus. Coach, you've been very vocal about making sure that your sport and your team gets recognition, gets notoriety, and gets eyes on the sport. What does an event like this hopefully start and be the catalyst uh, for that going forward? You know, one of the things that I think has been that's been fun today is I'm, well, I think going in, I think uh, one of the things was this can't be a one year deal. You know, this has got to be done in a way that people find value in this. And we get to year two or three. There's there's success if we're able to do that. But as I'm walking around, I'm, I'm you know, we're talking with all of the different people. It's uh, there's been a lot of all right next year we're going to do this we've got to do this better and so the, you, you love to hear that on the other hand if we're the only conference that's doing this this time next year then then there's a little bit of failure in that right it's a uh, you know a, big 10 has shown great leadership and and being the first one but there's got to be three four seven conferences that are doing this next year it's a uh, uh, this is a, a, a sport that people are passionate about following and uh, putting a spotlight on that for, you know, and giving access is, uh, it's, it's, it's got to be more than the Big Ten moving forward. Other questions, Lee? Lee Feinshaw, follow on Mike.com. Anna, the last time we saw you, you had a pretty good match. How did that night change your volleyball and personal life? Um, well... Volleyball and personal life, well, it kind of went in a little bit two and two after that, but I think it just really gave me the confidence in myself that I was trying to dig out for a while because I knew my team and coaches had all the confidence in me. Um, but at that time, you know, you're in such a high pressure situation and we have a job on the court. Everyone on our side, like we all wanted it, and so did the other side of the net. And it was just such a high level of competition that we trained for in that moment. So it was just time to lay it out on the court, and I think we did then. It's good. But since then, you know, what, you know, since then, yeah, I mean, like someone like yourself, can you walk around Madison without getting recognized, for example? Or, you know? I mean, yeah, they, you know, there's people on campus that will sometimes ask for pictures, but that's kind of with all of our team. You know, it's our fan support in the community is amazing. Um, so we definitely love them, and yeah, it's. I like to think I live a pretty normal life. <laughs> Anna, you're so young, but after last season, have you seen yourself step into more of a leadership role with this team, or where do you kind of see yourself fall amongst the group? Yeah, so I guess I still am pretty young, but uh, kind of like this is kind of how our team is just in general. But you know, Kelly selects like these people who are not afraid to like use their voice. Like we respect confrontation and our vo each other's voices in the gym. Um, so kind of now that I've almost I feel like our just team has a lot of trust in each other. So with that, I do not. I do feel like I can like speak about things, and I think everybody kind of tackled a new leadership role. How have you seen with with the talent that was lost from this past season? How have you seen certain people kind of step up and form this new roster? Well, even when we had that talent, we still had so much depth on our bench, and we learned so much from those individuals who did graduate as well. They taught us, so it's almost like we are still playing alongside with everything that they showed and left us with. But we do have so many new people joining our team that are bringing so much to the gym, um, whether it's a transfer or our incoming freshmen. Like, they are all ready to compete in our gym and at the high level as well. Kelly, uh, hi, I'm Mark Stewart from the Milwaukee Journal Center. Speaking of, of some of the transfers that have come into the program, can you, can you talk a little bit about you know, those women and you know, what, what each might bring to, to the table? Got one over here to my right, Sarah Franklin. That's a, uh, you know, last year, the past couple of years, that uh, has been one of the, the top outside hitters in, in the country. It's a, uh, um, she brings a, a presence uh, and, uh, and a skill set that is very, very unique. A confidence in, in, in her abilities. 
Um, we're ex really excited about, about uh, uh, getting her here. She's been around the program for a couple months now. Uh, Caroline Crawford, who was here in January, uh, transfer in as, as a middle. Um, you know, there's a toughness and a tenacity about uh, uh, about CC that I'm excited about. Uh, Chanel Bramschreiber, hopefully we're, we're able to get her eligible. Um, you know, she's been playing at Baylor the past couple years and is really, really talented as well. And, and they fit, you, you know, we, you, you get these, uh, these uh, people can, can transfer you know, and it's a lot easier to do that this year. But the trick is, is you get transfers that fit and fit your culture. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of talent that is that is seems to be moving around. But you got to be careful uh, because you got to fight for your culture a little bit. And uh, you, you know, I feel like the three that we uh, we've got here. Um, Fed our culture, and that's really exciting. And I love the fact that our players and our captains um, are are doing a great job of, of putting their arms around these transfers and, and embracing them, and uh, seeing that as 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 people that can continue to help elevate us, rather than you know, uh, they're, they're just there hasn't been any friction in what I've seen. I'm going to take a question with Zoom real quick. Coach, uh, we talked about Anna's performance in the NCAA tournament last year. How have you seen her grow as a player, and what are your expectations for her this season? I, she, she can go back and watch that film, and I'm sure she has, and see dozens of things that she could have done better. Uh, you know, when you look at the raw stats, they were they were ridiculous. And uh, but she she believes in herself in herself. Um, she got a lot of confidence in herself. Uh, but there's also a drive to get better. That's one of the things I really appreciate, uh, Coach and Anna, is um, you know she leans into information and uh, and she she wants to be great and. Uh, it's uh, she doesn't get small in, in in big moments, and so you know as good as what she had, she may never put those kinds of numbers and those kinds of matches together. But you're going to continue to see a, a player progress throughout of her career, um, and not somebody that's that's just going to be settled and think she's arrived. Another question, please. Sarah, can you take us through the process of leaving Michigan State and how you ended up in Wisconsin? Yeah, it was it was a hard decision. I'm not someone who who wants to just you know did something that's not working, um, and getting in the portal was was a hard decision. And after getting in the portal, you know, contacted by by a lot of coaches. But before I got in the portal, I had kind of in my mind I was like, you know, Wisconsin would be would be a pretty cool place cool place to go. So after getting in the portal and talking to a whole bunch of coaches and narrowing down my options, getting to Wisconsin on campus with all of the girls and with um, Coach Sheffield, I felt like it was just right. You know, after being there for, for the two-day visit, I reflected the week after and I was like, you know, I can't, I can't see another visit going any better than, than the Wisconsin visit. And so it was, it just, it felt right. Other questions in the room? Yeah. Sarah, specifically, what do you think you bring to this Wisconsin team? Um, I would like to think that I bring a bring a lot. I you know I love playing volleyball. The passion that I have for for the game is is a lot. Um, the competitive drive that I have I think fits right into the right into the culture. So coming and playing in these open gyms this summer, it's it feels natural. You know, uh, all of us are super competitive, and and like Anna said, we have a lot of confrontation, but it's good confrontation. We're all very very good at it. Uh, not so cute from volleyball world. Uh, with uh, Volleyball World streaming the Big Ten uh, internationally, what makes you know the Big Ten, the teams, the talent of this conference intriguing to an international audience? For you, Ellie, or uh, yeah, this is this is massive. This partnership. I mean, I don't think this can be underestimated of how important this is. Uh, to not just the Big Ten, but to our country. The, there's so many great volleyball fans around the world you as you can tell how many people are following uh you guys on instagram and twitter and so on and so forth and the content that you guys are putting out is really really good um you know we've got a couple international kids on our team right now and it's really hard for them to follow uh, their daughters and the fans that are that are growing up watching them when they were younger and they come here uh, continuing to follow their careers 
closely. Uh, you guys are giving a access to them. Um, you know, I, I think this will be a, um, uh, I, it's hard to articulate, I guess, what I think this could be five, six, seven, ten years that, down the road. I just think it's, it's really exciting. Um, this, was, this was really big news uh, for all of us. Uh, Kelly, um, can, can you talk a little bit, bit about your, your set, set as you have coming back? What, what did you see from those two in, in the spring? And you know, do you think you you both of them, or are you trying to figure out all, all one? You know, we. Uh, I'll take a step back. Great question. It's we we. We graduate a lot of players that had a lot of experience. So, you know, when you're looking at Sidney Hilly, you don't see too many five-year starting setters out there. You know, uh, Dana Redke, you know, all you know, player of the year, five-time first-team All-American. May not never happen again in college sports. And, you know, a Lauren Barnes and a Grace Loberg and a Gio Chivita. Um, and then uh, a, a couple others and Lauren Jardine and Julia Wallert that left. So that's those are seven players that came in, and you guys replace them with, with six new ones um, it's it's a new it's a new team it's a new journey it's a the, the new leadership uh, our, uh, we've got captains uh, Danielle Hart we're really excited about getting back after tearing our, our ACL I think she uh, you know at the beginning of last year I think she was playing about as well as any middle in the country so we're really really fired up that she decided to come back she wasn't planning on on doing this she thought that last year was going to be her last year but she's coming back um, and, uh, and then our two other captains happen to be uh, our two setters, and Izzy Ashburn and MJ Hamill. Izzy has been a serving specialist and a defensive specialist, so people have seen her. I think she led the Big Ten in service aces last year. Um, she's going into year four, and uh, MJ Hamill is going into year three. So they know what we're about, what this is about. Um, they believe in themselves. They've got a lot of confidence. They're not trying to be Sidney Hilly, just like Sidney Hilly wasn't trying to be uh, Lauren Carlini. Um, you know, but uh, but they believe in themselves and uh, don't know what we're going to do yet, whether we run a 5-1 or a 6-2. That's one of the things that has me so excited about starting practice and here in a week is um, um, is, is there's a lot, lot of a lot of questions, you know, and, um, uh, you know, I know these guys are chopping at the bit to, to get started. Back to the international thing. I mean, you've had some very key international players. Yeah. Some and you've recruited internationally and you've gotten some by accident. But does this thing with volleyball world and the exposure change your approach to international recruiting? I feel like I have a responsibility as a head coach for Wisconsin to bring in the best talent possible. I've got a responsibility that. I do have a responsibility to look at our own state and our own region first. I mean, that's a, uh, you know, I, I, with our fan base, I don't think I can go with just a, a, a team full of international students. Um, but the richness and the depth of, uh, and diversity that you bring onto a college campus is really important. Now, is, uh, is that at the forefront of what I'm thinking when I'm recruiting? No, not necessarily. But I do want to coach a team at a, at a school that we're at, that it is diverse, that there is learning that is happening more than just on the court. These guys spend time in the locker rooms and, and at dinners and in hotel rooms. And so when you're giving them different perspective and different backgrounds and what they've necessarily grown up with, it's part of the learning process. Um, I think the talent pool opens up immensely when the rest of the world sees what is possible, you know some of the, the kids that we're talking about. You have to choose either a an athletic path or an academic path. Um, in, in, in a lot of these foreign countries, what is unique about the United States is the ability to do both. You can compete like crazy at a sport that you love while also pursuing uh, a, a degree. That is what makes it unique here, and so many people around the world don't know that. It's just one or the other. And I think that giving insight uh, through Volleyball World, uh, people being able to see that, I do think you're going to see a floodgate of not just international kids coming in here, but elite players that are choosing, wow, I really want to do this instead of going and play pro, especially when you're throwing things like NIL in the mix, academic money, cost of attendance. Um, they're not turning down money for this thing. There's money opportunities on top of the education. It's really exciting. Uh, Matt Brown, D1 ticker and extra points. I have a question here for, for Anna and Sarah. 
I've been hearing, you know, all, all three of you talk about the, the importance of, of your team culture, particularly as you deal with roster attrition and bringing in international athletes. And I'm hearing you talk about how um, embracing conflict and, and competition is very important to that culture. I'm wondering if either of you could be a little bit more specific about what else defines the Wisconsin volleyball culture to you. So to me, the culture is just putting your best foot forward. So when we get recruited here, they're not just looking for volleyball players. They're looking for great people as well that we can turn into. Um, and they teach us that, life lessons as well. So when we're around each other all the time, like we are holding ourselves to a standard. Um, we, are, we know that we are representing that and we are carrying on that culture. So having the trust between each other and that friendly confrontation, um, just knowing that we are all leaders as well in our gym and we want to put our best foot forward. Like, and that comes through competition, being gritty, not letting the ball touch the floor, making an effort for it. We all hold each other to that standard in our program that you are going to put everything that you have on the court. Yeah, and that's exactly exactly what I saw when I came here on my visit. And I, I've always wanted that. And, and living through it now this past summer has been great to see and be a part of because it is it is a family. Like, we don't... We don't see it any other way. You know, we are a family, and we are, are, are allowed to do and have that type of friendly competition and um, confrontation. Uh, Ethan Casales, Dig Nittany Volleyball. Coach, what are your thoughts on Russ Rose retiring and Katie schumacher Collie taking over at Penn State? It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> Russ is – there. There's not a statue outside that facility in the next few years, then people have failed. He is the greatest coach that our sport has, has seen in, in, in our country. What he is, what he did over decades and decades um, and um, is, is unbelievable. It's a, um, uh, so appreciative. When I have when when I have phoned him and I've done this a few times and asked for advice and 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 help, he has gone out of his way to do that. Um, it's a um, and he's done it his own style, his own way, which is unique. Uh, but his teams, man, they competed and and they played at the end of the year was so much freedom. And those were things that I always, uh, you know, how do you get people to go so hard, but in the biggest moments, they're playing without fear and they're playing with confidence. Um, it's a, um, the, there's, a, you know, as a, as a coach coming up and, and, and a coach that's even been here a while, he's, his were always teams and how he went about things and how he structured his, his staff were, were things that we studied a lot and, and took a lot from just a lot of appreciation, you know, humor at the beginning about him re retiring That's because I just got tired of getting my butt kicked by him. Um, Katie, Katie knows what that, what that program is and, uh, and the opportunity and the responsibility, uh, that, that goes along with it. And, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of changes happening, you know, and you know, you've got some legendary, uh, coaches that have, that have retired, uh, uh, I'm waiting for Cook to, to join that list any day now. Um, that's, that's a horrible thing to say. I, I'm just, <laughs> just clearly joking with that. But it's, you know, you, you've got Dunning and Hebert and, and uh, McHaley and, and Jim Malaro and a lot of those guys that, that paved the way. And, and all of those coaches, and I was talking with John uh, about this last night, and just really appreciative of the battles he's fought. So many of these legendary coaches that have been around a long time have really put so much of themselves out there to grow the sport. Russ was certainly right there at, at the top. And, um, you know, excited for Katie, uh, excited for all three new coaches. That's three, you know, that you don't get too many, that many new coaches in our league coming in at the same time, uh, as well as so much of the talent that has graduated out of our league. It does feel like there's a, um, uh, there, there's a newness uh, right now going into this season. I think that's all we have time for today. So, coach, players, thank you for your help, and uh, good luck this season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's welcome in the Gophers, head coach Hugh McCutcheon, also Taylor Landfair, and Vera Defensive Specialist, Cece McGraw.
Sure. Thanks for being here. Just know how grateful we are to be a part of this inaugural event and uh, excited for another great season of Big Ten Volleyball. Not all at once. Please. Lee Feinswell from PolyballMag.com. Hugh, could you give us sort of a loose, loosely formed depth chart of positions for your team? Ooh, yeah, I, I would be speculating at best, Lee. We, we, we are so fortunate to have a lot of depth and talent on this team. And um, this preseason is going to be critical in terms of establishing the, the very things you're speaking to, you know, lineups and, and depth charts. But, but uh, you know, for me to put it out there at this point would seem a little reckless. Um, we've got some good returners, um, but one of the things we absolutely live by is we don't promise anyone starting jobs. We don't promise anyone playing time. We just promise everybody that we're going to invest in their development. So um, I think that stuff will play itself out. And I'd, I'd even go as far as to say that it could be a kind of an evolving thing over the course of the season as, as different players continue to grow and evolve. So uh, I would uh, respectfully decline to give you the depth chart. I'm shocked. Yeah, as also I would expect. Yes? Daniel, uh, Daniel Gilman with Six Rotations for CC. You spent now a good amount of time dealing with off seasons. In your opinion, do you feel like there's a good amount of time spent with the coaches before a season starts, or do you think that all of this hubbub in the off season feels like it deserves a little bit more time with the coaches? Yeah, I think we'd obviously want more time with the coaches, every opportunity we can get to get in the gym and learn. Um, obviously, like we do a lot of stuff on our own in the summer, and we have captain's practices and stuff, but there's only so much we can do. Um, so like when it comes to coach, coaches feedback and whatnot, for the newcomers, like that's way more impactful. So yeah, I'd say we'd hope that we could get more time. But I'm really, um, I think we're in a good spot right now, headed into the preseason. John, uh, John Audius, Badger Sports Network. Hugh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the partnership with the Big Ten Network and volleyball world. Kelly Sheffield was just in here talking about you know how that could impact recruiting internationally. And with your international background, I'm wondering how you feel that partnership could open up things um, specifically in the Big Ten. Yeah, I'm not sure about the, the synergies on the recruiting front, but, but all of that aside, not, not to say that those won't be a thing. I mean, who knows? But the idea that, uh, that Big Ten volleyball in particular can, can be presented on this global platform, on, on a global stage, is I think really important for, for volleyball world and for our sport in this country because I think the, the perception internationally is that we don't have a professional league per se, but when you look at the, the facilities and the investment and the crowds and the, the energy around our sport and this conference in particular, uh, you know, it rivals certainly anything that's going on in any other country. So I think it's going to be great for the world to see what college volleyball is, well, in particular Big Ten volleyball is. And, and you know, I think it's important that, um, you know, maybe, maybe that drives – more people to watch volleyball world TV and see that there's a ton of really good volleyball going on all over the world in a bunch of different countries as well. So I think there's this really good synergy that that could be created by this partnership. I think it's really important and impactful. Yeah. Um, your former player, uh, Stephanie, is playing on Perugia Italian yeah. mm -hmm. A1 League. Uh, they're ranked 10th preseason. How do you think she'll be able to handle you know that league on that team? And you know, what do you think she could bring to a team that's at the bottom of the league? Well, I have a lot of faith in Stephanie. Um, and I, I think she really made a smart decision to, to start her professional career playing in, in Germany. I mean, not to say that the Bundesliga isn't good, but, but it, it was a, a nice transitional few months, get used to being in Europe, get used to that whole deal of being a pro versus playing collegiately. And, um, yeah, I think she's she's going to be uh, she's going to be ready to go. One of the things that's great about Stephanie, relative to the the shift into the international realm, is she can play the whole game. As an opposite, that's compelling. You know, she hits a good serve in the court. She can play defense. She can hit front row, back row. She's got range. She's a good right side blocker. 
Um, so I think there's a lot of value she can add. Now, whether she can carry the load and, and you know, shift the needle of Perugia a ton, who knows? But, uh, you know, I, I don't mind backing her. I'd put some money on her. She's, she can play. I have a question on Zoom for Coach. Uh, where were you when you heard the news that UCLA and USC were joining the Big Ten? And how do you think the addition of those two teams will impact an already competitive conference? Uh, I'm not sure I was. I think just probably hanging out at home. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think it's uh, an, a very interesting and important evolution in terms of college athletics. As we know, the landscape of the college athletics world is, is kind of getting reshaped, reformed, uh, whatever you want to call it. And um, as Oklahoma and Texas kind of made their move, here's the Big Ten responding. Um, and, and I think, uh, you know, a really – impressive decision um, based on all the factors that are going into this, the, the TV market footprint, the quality of uh, the academic rigor of those institutions, the quality of the sporting programs they provide, and I think it's a really good fit. So yeah, we're excited to have them join, and, and who knows how it's all going to play out, but uh, really cool that, that uh, Big Ten's getting bigger. Next question, Pete. Uh, Peter Furrier, Big Ten Plus. For Taylor and CC, another big recruiting class coming in, a lot of transfers as well. What have you two done in this offseason, especially to embrace all those new players and know that you're going to be another uh, favorite in the big, the big Ten? Well, I personally think that we've all just come together as a team and just really took in those people that came in and just making sure that they all feel like they have a voice and making sure that we all gelled well, really well as a team because what goes on the, off the court actually comes on onto the court. So I think building chemistry, making sure we have a lot of trust within each other, making sure that our competitive drive is up where it needs to be, making sure our standards are where they're supposed to be at too. Got another question on Zoom. This one um, for CeCe. How do you view this year's roster in relationship with some of the other teams that you play for with the Gophers? It seems like there's a nice balance of returning players to go along with the freshman class and the transfers. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, our freshman class and a lot of our newcomers and transfers are definitely going to add a lot of depth to our um, roster, which is great. I think in years past, we haven't had as much depth, so I think that'll be a big shift for us this season. Um, a lot of moving parts and people that can play multiple positions, so I think that'll be a strength of ours. So I'm really looking forward to getting in the gym and working with the new players and just um, we're focusing on connecting on and off the court and making sure we're all on the same page with our goals for the season. Talk maybe about what that experience was like, what it meant to you, but also maybe you became friends with the Maya and Raynell that you might not have been previously, what that might mean playing against them during the season or anything like that. Yeah, for anything sure. Anything you want to mm -hmm. tell us about that? I just think my experience is really incredible because I understood what happened back then and to some extent. I kind of just knew the surface layer of things that, that actually happened back then, but being able to actually understand and learn and read about everything that actually happened in depth. I think was an amazing experience just because I think more people need to understand what happened because I feel like nothing's really talked about in schools and I feel like more people need to be able to actually experience what happened and be able to read every single story and everything that actually happened just because it's it's really the amount of emotions that came with it was incredible to me and like there were so many tears there was so much frustration anger all the different emo emotions that you could possibly feel were felt and I think that it was just an amazing experience and I would definitely love to do it again. I definitely would love to take my family down there. And anybody that has the ability to actually go down there, I think it would be amazing for you to actually travel and just see what happens. And also in terms of being able to play, I think it would be cool just to be able to see the players that were there, just to see them across the net and be like, hey, I'm with you. Like we're in this together. We're both going through the exact same thing that all of our ancestors went through. And so just being able to fight through that has been really important to me. You think sales dignity in volleyball for the players. What does it mean to you to be a role model for the next generation of volleyball players and have young fans come up to you after matches? CC start with you. Okay. Um, yeah, I think playing at this level, I mean, you definitely have the ability to influence a lot of young athletes. And so I think most importantly, just teaching them how to be a good teammate and really modeling that on the court. I think doing what you can to help those around you in any way possible, like regardless of how well you do and your abilities, I think it's most important to, as a role model, to set that example um, for young female athletes to work hard, learn, get better, and just ultimately be a good person. And I don't know, I think the way we play and go about it at our program, it speaks volumes. Coach, another question for you on Zoom. Uh, always played a tough, very tough non-conference schedule. Is this your toughest one yet? And how do you think it'll prepare you for the Big Ten? 
uh, before that, um, did you want to respond to that? Was it for both athletes? I, I don't know. If, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yep. Oh, I would just say probably to those younger athletes, just letting them know that they can be a person and their whole world doesn't have to center around volleyball. You know that they can just shoot for the stars, go whatever they want to. Just dream big. There you go. Um, to your question, yeah, it, it's uh, a robust schedule, no question. So uh, we'll we'll learn a lot and um, you know and go from there. But but I've always found that knowing how rigorous the big is going to be, uh, you know, kind of tiptoeing around preseason, I don't think does you any good. I, I, you know, if we've got spaces in our game, I'd rather find out early. And, and, you know, the goal is to be the best we can be in December. And if we happen to be good in August and September, then cool, <laughs> you know. But, but the goal is to learn and, and, um, and then, you know, compete and try to get ready for what we know is going to be a really tough conference schedule. Other questions in there? Yep. Lincoln, are you on Harwell Harold Taylor, what's it? I mean, sorry. How much are you itching to get back on the court? And what's the past year been like? What are some challenges you've had to overcome? And what? What are you looking forward to about getting back on the court and competing? I'm just really excited to be back with my teammates, actually physically on the court. I feel like last year I really took the advantage of becoming a better teammate. And I know that I couldn't be out with my teammates on the court physically, but I knew that I could be with them on the sideline and giving them as much energy as I could, screaming my head off, just having, the bl like just having a blast on the sideline. And I think just coming into this year, I also want to do the exact same thing, making sure that I'm a great leader, being a great teammate, and just letting my teammates know that I'm there for them always, 100% no matter what. Even if I do get injured, I'm there for you. Coach, what are your thoughts on Russ Rose retiring and Katie Schumacher Colley taking over at Penn State? Yeah, obviously the end of a a, a, a legacy career. You know, what, what was it? Forty four? Is that how many? Forty three. Um, uh, I mean, that's uh, incredible on so many levels, and you know, a sustained level of competitive success that's likely to be unrivaled. And so, yeah, Russ's influence on our sport and especially on Big Ten volleyball cannot be understated. You've got a you've got a appreciate and value this lifelong contribution he made to to this and we're all I mean we all stand on the shoulders of those those that came before us but you know Russ was a big part of building all of this um, and to that end you know I think hiring Katie was a really good decision she's knowledgeable she was with Russ for the last few years so you know in terms of knowing the, the lay of the land the, the status quo with the program I think it's a, a seamless transition, and um, you know we know they're just going to continue to keep rolling. But um, yeah, good hire for them, and um, obviously we're sad to see Russ go. But after 43 years, he's probably earned the right to go do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. <laughs> Got another question on Zoom. This one CC is for you. Uh, how tough was your decision to come back for one more year, and what were the biggest factors? In Honestly, it wasn't that tough. I mean, it was kind of a no-brainer for me. Right as I found out that we could get another year of eligibility, I was like, perfect. I can start grad school and get a program under my belt. Um, and just getting another opportunity to learn from you and the rest of the staff and be around my teammates. I think my junior year, I missed out on a big chunk of the season. And so part of me was like, you know, I, I want to be back and healthy and myself again. So having one final run at it with my teammates and my amazing coaching staff and stuff was definitely the biggest thing for me. Follow-up question on that real quick uh, for Coach. Uh, what was your reaction when you found out CC was coming back for another year? And yeah. also, what have you seen for Taylor as she's navigated rehabbing her difficult injury and how do you view her role with the team? Yeah, really happy with CC's decision. Um, uh, I think for us, it was kind of a no-brainer as well. It felt like a win-win, so it wasn't a long conversation. Um, you know, as for Taylor, I think that this little blip in her journey, this this injury, um, as as untimely and difficult as as especially ab injuries can be, um, I do think there was some opportunity for her in that, and she's spoken to that already. But you know, we're talking about someone that that probably never came off the court ever in her career. And, and here, now all of a sudden, how do you be on a team when you're not out there you know, making every play? And, and yet Taylor, uh, to her credit, found a ton of different ways to add value and to, to build the team and to support the team. And I think having that kind of empathy for what it is to be on the bench is going to help her to be a, better when she's out on the court. So I, I know it wasn't cool to get hurt. 
Um, but I do think there was some valuable lessons learned, and, and um, I think that's going to hold her in good stead. So we're excited to have her back out there. We've got a lot of questions coming in on Zoom. Taylor, this one's for you. You came to campus with Melanie and Jenna and then dealt with the pandemic and being injured. Is there a part of this season that feels like it's finally getting back to normal for you? And what do you expect from yourself as well as those two this season? Um, I think personally, just being able to be in the atmosphere of the PAV is definitely going to be one of my top things. I think just competing in the PAV with all the fans and so much energy and all the excitement. And then with Melanie and Jenna, I think all of us were in all this together. And I think that we're all star we already have this bond together. So I think just kind of building on that and just bringing that onto the court will help us a lot. Other questions, folks in the room? Yep. Players, what do you love most about playing volleyball and just being at Minnesota in general? Yeah, I mean, it's a team sport. That's what I love most about it, you know. Um, I think the relationships I've built with my teammates and stuff throughout all these years um, wouldn't change anything for the world. So I think that's been the biggest thing. And um, Minnesota, I mean, I live 30 minutes from campus, so I knew I wanted to stay close to home and have all my family members at all my matches and stuff there to support me. So. Um, obviously being close to home, but just getting to wear the M on my jersey and represent my home state and play for an incredible um, incredible program and great coaches. I don't know. I'm so grateful that I've had all these opportunities and experiences with this sport. I would completely agree with CC. I think just knowing that me and my teammates are always there for each other. We're always our ride or dies no matter what happens. And I also think that being able to represent my last name, because I'm not from Minnesota, so just being able to wear the M, just like Cece said, and just represent my family, my last name, and just let my parents know that they raised me right, and everything that they gave me, I've been using it to take it to my advantage, because I just, I have to. Got time for a couple more questions, folks in the room, if you have them. Cece, does this feel like a single-minded focus on winning championships, especially being in your home state? Oh yeah, hands down. I think that's everyone's goal, um, but especially this being my last hurrah. Like, I'm going all out. Like, and being like myself again and healthy uh, mentally and physically. I mean, I just want to win some games and compete and play against, play with my teammates and stuff. And I don't know. It's all or nothing. So, yeah, I'd say that's definitely my approach this season. And coach, how much are you going to be depending on Taylor, especially without having Stephanie to kind of carry that load offensively and, and seeing her take the next step in, in her college career? Well, I think we'll we'll certainly lean on on Taylor, but I think one of the uh, the opportunities that this current iteration of our team presents us is is a lot of balance, and so I think um, not not that we were somehow you know, unidimensional before, but um, it feels like there's a lot of different ways we can attack teams. And uh, I think having that, that balance is going to be something that we're going to really try to play to. Got one last question on the Zoom uh, for both of the players. Is it daunting or exciting to get ready to play this kind of a non-conference and a conference schedule? I think it's definitely exciting. I'm super excited just because we don't get to see those teams all the time. And just being able to play them at a different time in the season, I think is super exciting. I'm so excited. I can't wait for it, honestly. <laughs> I mean, after four years, I'd say, I, I mean, we usually like to load up our preseason, so it isn't anything new for us. Um, but I think it helps us down the road. So yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to just play, getting to play some good competitive volleyball and um, all those road matches in preseason in Texas. Like, it's just going to be some good, fun volleyball where you can learn and get better. Any other questions here in the room? Yeah, make go ahead. Because this never gets old with Minnesota players. You can thank me later, Hugh. Mm -hmm. CC, things that Hugh says that make you laugh, and he doesn't necessarily mean to make you laugh. Give me one or two. Um, I would say anytime. You know, he's giving us feedback or something. He'll always be like, oh, but you're still a good person. <laughs> like, that's usually, he loves that one. You're like, oh, thanks, Hugh. Like, you're so kind. That's usually one of the, <laughs> my favorite. Yeah. We just don't want him to take it personally. It's just, <laughs> hey, you're a good person. We like you, but you have this little inefficiency, and we need to correct it. That's all. Yeah. And on that note, coach, players, thank you so much today. Good good. Good. Very thank good. You. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See you in six weeks, Yeah, cheers. My throat is killing me.
Coach, you want to start us off with an opening statement and take questions? Sure. Um, first of all, I, I just want to thank Commissioner Warren, um, the entire Big Ten office, um, our senior women's administrators who really pushed for this event. Um, we're really lucky and fortunate to be here, and um, I'm excited for our players and the future of eyeball. And um, we're we're happy to be here. Pete Furry, Big Ten Plus. Coach, of course, with Coach Rose leaving, big shoes to fill. It's been the question most coaches have been asked this weekend. What, how are you going to honor him and his legacy, but then what are you going to bring to the table that's different? Yeah. Um, you know, like I've said before, I, I, I feel a great deal of responsibility to continue the traditions and the legacy that, that Coach, you know, made this all possible. Um, you know, not only for Penn State Volleyball, but I think Big Ten Volleyball and the country that he's, uh, you know, he's kind of set the tone and, and paved the way for so many people. So I'm excited to continue that. And, you know, I want Penn State Volleyball to continue to rise and um, to always, you know, be great. Other questions? Uh, Ethan Casales, Big Nanny Volleyball. With so many newcomers to the program, how have you adjusted to adding them and getting the team cohesion together? Well, you know, with not being able to train in the summer, um, the girls have been lifting and doing conditioning with uh, our strength coach, but everyone's been here. I'm proud of how they've been treating each other and, and working together. And, um, you know, I'll let you know in a week how it is in the gym. But I'm excited to get in there with everyone. I mean, we have four transfers, four freshmen, and nine returners. So I'm looking forward to getting them together and getting them working um, and being on the same page. What have you seen from Angelina and Taylor so far this yeah. week and this summer? You know, it was Ange was back this spring, so it was great to see her in the gym. And she improved and got a lot stronger. Um, you know, Ange works really hard all the time. And she does things on her own that's going to separate her from other athletes. Um, I'm excited to see what she's going to be able to do this year, and she'll definitely make an impact. And, you know, Taylor, we're, we're happy Taylor chose Penn State the second time around. So, um, obviously, she has the experience in the Big Ten that we need, and we're looking for her to, you know, really hold down the middle and, and do some great things. Uh, Lincoln Arnie, Omaha World Herald. Taylor, what did you see from Penn State when you were lined up from across the net, and then what kind of ultimately led you to the program joining them this year? I mean, everyone knows Penn State has like the best legacy there is when it comes to volleyball. Um, and seeing that their team was going to be fresh was something I was looking for, a fresh start. Um, and I just felt really welcomed when I got here. So just the overall energy was something that really intrigued me. Senior defensive specialists come along with the departure of Jenna. Yeah, you know, I think Maddie did a really great job in the spring. Cassie's doing really nice things. Um, you know, Quinn has come in and done some, you know, she'll be able to help us out. Um, but who's going to be in that position yet? I don't know. And also, setter, you have uh, two couple options with Gavin yeah. leaving as well. So we have two new setters. We have a freshman, Katie Herda, and Celicia, who's our transfer. And um, yeah, we're, we'll see what they do in the gym and who's going to get, you know, earn that spot. Add a question, please. So you guys, this is the end of the day. It's the end of the day for us. Is it also the end of the Let's day? Let's party. Yeah. <laughs> so, can you tell us where, where you started and all the stops you made to get to this point in this building? Oh, gosh. No. Too many. <laughs> it's been great. It's been great, though. There's yeah. no no complaining on our part. It's, it's been a lot of fun. The podcast that was pretty fun. Yeah. Like the radio series XM that was nice. Um, making all the TikToks have been great. I don't know. They just treated us with kindness, so I'm happy. Do you remember in order all the all the stuff you did? I, I mean, I do. But I don't know if we do. started off with the interviews downstairs, <laughs> and then we went to another radio, interview room. We went yeah. to the radio podcast. Radio. ESPN. Then ESPN. TikToks. Came up here. Did the, the Big, Big Ten. Ten. And then... And made more TikToks. More TikToks. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And they're a big fan of the TikToks. So. Yeah. But this is the most important one, right? Yes. What do you do on TikTok? We um, dance. Yeah, a lot of dances. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we forced it. A little it. bit. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs>
Daniel Gilman, Six Rotations. Coach, how similar is Taylor's style to Caitlin Horde, and, and how much do you have to kind of change the, the offensive attack with a big piece leaving like her? Yeah, I mean, Taylor's Taylor. I'm not going to compare her to anyone. Taylor brings a lot to the table. Um, you know, she's, she's who she is, and she's going to help us, and she's going to be a force in the Big Ten. Um, you know, we, we replaced quite a few players that graduated and, and went on to new schools, and I'm confident that the players we brought in are, are going to, you know, really embrace being at Big Ten, at the Big Ten school and at Penn State. Other question? Yep. How has being a head coach changed since you were head coach before to now with the different responsibilities? Well, I mean, it's all this media stuff, yeah. right? <laughs> no, I mean, it's... I've been fortunate at the schools that I've been at, you know, UIC and at UPenn. I mean, both schools that um, really did the best they could with volleyball. And so I've been fortunate to be around a lot of really good people. And um, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Did you ever get interviewed when you were at Penn? Yes. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. Not like this, but. How, how has the transfer portal changed? Kind of, I mean, uh, it wasn't much when you were previous head coach. How has that changed? You no, know, it gives you kind of an opportunity to yeah. refresh and kind of define that. Yeah, it's, of your it's, own. it's changed the game for sure. I mean, I liked it because we, we were, you know, able to get players like Taylor and Celicia and Zoe and Cash and players that were that are going to make an impact in this conference. Um, you know, we were in a position that we had to get transfers. Um, you know, I would like all of our players to stay, but, you know, they have this unique opportunity to, um, you know, go somewhere for grad school or, you know, maybe it wasn't the best fit. And, you know, I think it's, uh, it's a wild world, but, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the ones that we ended up with. I have a question on Zoom. Angelina, where were you when you heard that UCLA and USC were joining the Big Ten? What are your thoughts on them joining an already super strong conference? Yeah, I don't remember exactly where I was, but I'm excited because um, it just adds even more really good competition to the Big Ten, more, I don't know, I'm really excited for it. Tip was in question. Um, yeah, I found out through social media, um, and I hate to be superficial, but I was excited. I was like, we get trips to Alta Cali now, <laughs> so I was fine with it. Um, but yeah, there are two really good programs out there, and I'm excited to play them. I mean, I'll get like a year with them a season, but yeah, I'm excited. Other questions? Zoe Weatherington, yeah, she, she may hit the hardest ball of anybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she's on, she's a really, really good player. Can you just tell us about how you got her and what, what she might do for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, Zoe was one of the ones that went in the portal and we reached out to her and, you know, started those conversations. I think she really took her time. She visited a couple schools and, um, you know, we really connected when she came on campus. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what she's going to do here. Um, you know, we'll, we'll look for her to, you know, maybe be more of a right side player. And, um, but we'll see. Like I said, we haven't been in the gym at all with these girls this summer. So it'll be a, uh, a lot, of, a lot of new things right away. Angelina, what's your impression of two of the new outsides, Alexa and Cash? What, what do they bring to the team? Um, they both bring so much energy, good energy. Cash always gets so excited whenever she's playing. And it's so easy to play with them. And how do you help bring along some of the newcomers like Taylor? Um, just showing them kind of how we've done things in the past. But it's, it's also changing so much this year. And just showing them just kind of what we've done. Other questions? Yep. Taylor, what, what's it been like uh, adjusting to new teammates, new practices, all that stuff? Well, I mean, the girls, when I came on my visit, they were automatically, like, just so friendly. Um, they really felt me, like, really welcoming. And obviously, I, I came in with other transfers, so I feel like that was nice, too. So, you know, the team and the girls, they've just been I feel like we've clicked since the beginning, if that makes sense. Um, and it's just really nice to have that on the team, especially because we are fresh and new and, you know, going into season. I think that's really, like, a good, important character you kind of have to have. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited. Any final questions for Coach or the players? Uh, 
for the players, what's your impression of the two new setters? And what's your connection like with them on and off the court? Um, so far, just based on like open gyms, our connection has been really good, and they take feedback really easily. So it's been good. You too. Okay. Um, yeah, both the setters are really great. Um, you know, Lisa, she is pretty experienced, and you know, I just love having somebody come into our gym with that much knowledge. It's like pretty respectable, I would say. Um, and Katie, you know, coming in, she's filling in big shoes and she's doing what she does best, which is setting, obviously. And she's a great person and great character. Um, and I'm excited to see, you know, who's going to get the spot. Angelina, you said the team's going through a lot of change this year. What have you seen from Coach to kind of that she's put her stamp on the program to make it her own? What, what differences have you seen? Um, one thing that's always stuck out to me is being, like during the spring we started it, is being grateful for everything you have. Before practices, we always have our like grateful circle, even if it's something small. And just showing that everything we have, we can't take for granted for. Yeah, but you miss about Coach Rose. Um, I really loved playing for him. It was, I don't know what I miss. I'm trying to think of something. <laughs> but he was, <laughs> I just, I'm happy that I got the opportunity because I learned so much from him because he's been around the game for such a long time. He sends his best. He's golfing today. So <laughs> talk to him this morning. Coach, how important is Chicago and the Midwest in general in terms of recruiting? Yeah, I mean, the Midwest has a lot of good volleyball going on. So, I mean, we have, you know, quite a few kids from Illinois on our team now. And, you know, we'll continue to recruit the best players that will fit into Penn State. Here in your home city, what did you guys have a chance to do the last oh, couple days? Oh, it's great. You know, I came in a couple days early. I had some family parties going on that I, you know, was lucky enough to go to. But these guys hit the town. They had pizza, architecture yeah. tour. Yeah, the boat tour, saw the bean, walked a lot. Yeah, um, ate really good food. <laughs> yeah, lots of food. It was great. Anything else? Coach, ladies, thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks for doing this.